هلا غني ميك انا لازم اقول لك انا كيما I don't know. I don't know how to understand it. It's so it's very esoteric. You know? I don't know. We'll look at it. We'll try to we'll try to decode it according to the way the lesson builds up. Okay. But let's do it and let's go into it. Then you know what I mean. Ask all the questions you guys want. You can see the point. Okay. Torah and Chet. Shadam yichnas ba'avodat Hashem. When a man enters into service of God, serving Hashem. I'm just going to translate it as Avodat Hashem at this moment because everyone knows what that is. The way is that, like, the way that they show him is that they show him rejection. What happens is that the second a person enters into Abu Hashem, and by the way, this is not referring to someone who's entering into service of God for the first time. Funny enough, Paul and I were just telling you that you have to read um, the, one of the first verses of Shema, which speak about. Um, that Hashem commanded you on this day, right? Uh, that I command on you in this day. Why did it say Hayom? Because when Hashem was telling us in that verse, it wasn't on that day that Hashem gave it to us. So what's going on here? Why is Hashem telling us on that day? So Rabbi Yosef Karon Shulchan Aruch writes, you have to make the Torah precious in your eyes. Meaning the second, you, you can't read that verse and... Think of it that you've already read it 10 times or 50 times or 100 times because you say it all the time. You have to read it as if it's brand new. So here he's saying, a person enters into Abu Hashem, but don't think that a person entering into Abu Hashem for the first time and then 10 years on, he's not entering into Abu Hashem, he's already in it. No, you're entering into Abu Hashem every single day. Every level you want to grow forward and progress, you're entering into Abu Hashem. Sure. So this is a reference to every single person, no matter where he's on, which level, it's tzaddik or not tzaddik, because... Yeah, a person who's done this a thousand times might know this concept, but you have to reapply it all the time. To new things. To new things. So, because you're constantly progressing, so the next level is brand new. It's a new world completely. You're a brand new person the next day. You know many stories where the Ariza stood up for a person one day, um, he walked into a shul because he had a nation of a big tzaddik inside him, and then the next day he didn't stand up and he started cursing the person. Not cursing, but like getting angry at the person and embarrassing him because he had the, the nation of a rasha the next day. You're a completely new person. You know what I mean? So tomorrow is a new world completely. Don't think about the past. Don't think about the future you have right now. Right now you're entering the Dabat Hashem for the first time. Isaiah there, and what's the path that they show him? Shema'a in lo They show him rejection. They throw him away. The second a person enters to serve God, what do they do? Rather than hug him, push him away. It's a very unique concept and it's pretty... Kind of him. Yeah. But <laughs> no. It, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense. It seems like if I'm entering the path to God, I want to see God for the first time, God should open up. up Isn't it up kind up. of like how um, like you're supposed to say if someone's converting, to tell them not to do it, to see if they really want it. Exactly. After. So this plays into the exact point of what it is. It's to build up your like your desire for the right. thing, right? It's exactly that. But we're going to see how the menu takes us a different uh, path. It, it's that, this concept, meaning that the rejection is only to bring you closer. And I'm not gonna explain this, but um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna build up the lesson. But in Melo, and by the way, each and every one of these words has meanings that we can't even understand. We're gonna explain it according to Pshat, simple level, because obviously the way Rabbi Nathan wants us to understand this, and Rabbi Enu wants us to understand this, it is the level that we are, on, and because we don't we don't understand these complicated things, we explain it deep she tooth. So yeah, if you were to take apart the word derech, we know Rabbi Enu speaks about derech. Derech is to have a, a path. Derech is a pathway of tshuva, it's explained in lesson 6. And derech is a combination of two types of mastery you have to have. You have to know how to move whenever you are feeling close to God, when you feel like you're doing a lot of good things and other stuff, how to feel and react to that, and how to react whenever you feel like you're in the worst place on earth, when you're in the hell of hells, right? This is the derech that I'm mean, speaking about here, especially. The derech is, uh, we know it's a big thought about this, the derech is gematria, numerical value 224. And there's two types of big youth, masteries, two types of perfection that Rabbeinu needs a person to have, or any person must have to do tshuva, Rabbeinu says. 
Um, and obviously, this is all speaking about tshuva because the reason why you want to enter into Avodah Hashem is correct. This right. tshuva yeah. to, to return to Hashem. Tshuva is tashuv hey. Either you're returning the hay, which is the 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 hay and the shrina that's in the klipot in the dust, all of these holy forces that you drop because of your sins, you need to return them to Hashem. But all this stuff is is obviously very esoteric. We're gonna try to do Ipshitu. But derech two twenty four right and baki, which means master. The Gematria Bet Kufyud is 112. But because we said there's two types of mastery, which is mastery and running and returning, when you feel like you're close to Hashem, when you're running to Hashem, everything is going well, you're doing Mikveh, you're doing Tfila, you're doing Khatot, everything, you have to make yourself humble. You have to realize Hashem is very far from you. This is one mastery. Second mastery is when you feel very far from you, Hashem is right next to you. It's a paradox. There's no way. There's <laughs> love. Meaning it's an infinite goal. No matter where you are, you have to be a Maki Baracha. You always have to go. Move forward. There's no staying in the same place. If you think you're close, the second you, you, you are sufficient with your level, it's finished. You're done. Where's the, where's the progression? The second you feel like you're far and you can't move, no, I shouldn't tell you, I'm with you. Come, let's walk together. I'm picking you up. This is the mastery you have to have to give yourself the strength in both of those scenarios because those are the only two scenarios you are ever in. You're either feeling good or you're feeling bad. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's no, you know what I mean? So you have to understand in which scenario to feel and how to apply that feeling, in, depending on what you're feeling. So, Rabbeinu said, this is the derech. But what's he saying? This derech of tshuva, now he's gonna explain what you do whenever you feel very far. Now he's gonna explain one of those paths. When you feel like you're being rejected, as if you're no one before Hashem, he's gonna explain how to feel like that. It's like almost one of the, the scenarios of both of those feelings that a person can get, the good or the bad, the, the feeling close to the feeling far, now I'm going to explain all about the, the feeling far and how to change that into feeling close. But this is a big secret. So I'm going to explain this and how to get to that place. So they show him rejection. And it seems to him as if from up there, from Hashem, from Hashem and up there in the heavens, everyone is pushing him away. No one wants him. They don't allow this person to enter into service of Hashem at all. He doesn't have, doesn't have his breath. You know what I mean? He can't take, a, he can't even take a, a rest of the moment. He, he's, he's being pushed away. But Rabbeinu is turning this around into positivity. He's saying, know that all of this dis distancing that you're feeling, all this rejection, this this feeling that Hashem doesn't want you, is actually only, it's all kulod kavod. It's all getting closer. Meaning, the distancing in itself is the closeness. So we said, like, you know when you feel far from Hashem, Hashem is actually closer to you? The fact that you feel far is actually the fact, in reality, that Hashem is close to you. But it's the most insane concept ever. It's, it's insane, but it mm -hmm. seems to you that Hashem is far, right? Hashem is not listening to my prayers. Every tweet that I'm doing, Hashem is not answering me. I want to find a wife, Hashem is not answering me. I want to destroy this tava, this desire, Hashem is not answering me. I have a problem with parasa, Hashem is not answering me. But the fact that you're doing all this effort and it feels to you as if Hashem is not there is proof that Hashem is right next to you. And it's saying, Kulod Kavut, it's, it's actually all of this is Hit Kavut, it's getting closer to Hashem. All this, this, uh, what do you call it? This experience and this journey you're going through and these feelings of emotions is actually only to bring you closer. You're getting there, you know what I mean? Just wait. What is the Hashem saying? You need it. Lots and lots of strength, uh, great strength, in order not to fall up here in your mind. Because Rabbi was saying all the falls are not physicality, it's up here. This is the Hayush. That we think we fall, but actually up here we fall. And because up here we've already given up, or because we feel far up here, we've already decided in our minds that Hashem is far away, that's what makes us fall into the, into the, into the problems. Because Rabbeinu says there's a sin, right? We do the sin, and Rabbeinu is going to explain later on in this lesson. What's bigger than the sin is the actual depression that you need afterwards. When you fall into sadness because of the fact that you feel far from Hashem, that's even bigger of a sin than the actual sin itself. Because that's going to break your connection completely. One sin can disconnect you a little bit, right? But the fact that you've already given up up here is the worst single thing possible. So, this is what he's saying, not to fall up here with that toe in your mind. Because that's where it all exists. It's all up here because first off, the fact that 
I'm going to get the kids that are all about this stuff about all of here. We'll, we'll get to it and we'll explain it. So never fall in your mind, God forbid. That when you see that years and many, many years and days have passed. That you are exerting lots of effort, in, great effort in order to, to, to serve Hashem. And you still see that you're extremely far. You weren't allowed at all to enter into the gates of Tushan, meaning you feel like Hashem is not letting you even have a moment to rest it. You know what I mean? You're getting pushed away, and it's not like he's, uh, he's like, okay, he pushed you away once, and he's like, okay, come back. No, he's like, he's continuing to push you. You feel like, like bro, I don't want you to come into this party you at all. Come. You're not allowed. <laughs> I don't yeah. want you. This person feels like that. He's speaking to us, obviously. And you haven't. You feel like you haven't entered at all into the gates of holiness. Even the little things that you do, you feel like you've done nothing, or you feel like you haven't accomplished a single thing. Because you see within yourself that you're filled with lots of crudeness, thickness, gashmiut, materialism, heroin, uh, thoughts, lots of confusions, distractions. You feel like you're filled with all these things that you're not even close to God. God doesn't want you, you don't know God, nothing's going on. Bechor Bashahu Watil Asub Abodat Hashem. And all that you want to do in Abodat Hashem and serve it and to serve Hashem, to find God, is a Devashim Bashan, no matter what thing in holiness it is, whether it's a tikunatari or a mikbe or a kibud of em honoring your parents, whatever it is. Any single holy act, and manichinotom, it feels you feel as if God no one allows you to do it. Hashem is not allowing you to do a single thing. And it seems to you as if God is not looking at you at all. God has completely taken his protection off you and his sight. You're doing everything as if no one's watching you. And he doesn't want his service at all. So this is, you can interpret this in two ways, I think. You can interpret it in this idea that Hashem doesn't, you feel as if Hashem doesn't want your service. Or now you get to the point as if you don't even want to do it. The end will take plan It seems to me that your service becomes nothing in your eyes. You don't want it. You've given up. It's finished. You fall into Yerush. It's a giving up. Because of the fact, why do you fall into this place where you get to this giving up? That you don't want your service at all? You don't even care about what you did before? That it doesn't matter? It's worth nothing? Because you see that you're screaming all the time. You're begging and you're pleading God that Hashem helps you to get close to Him. And even so that you're screaming, and then you still see that you're far. So you give up. You feel like your prayers are worth nothing. Again, therefore, it seems to him, it seems as if God is not looking at you. and He's not turning to you at all. Which means you feel like God doesn't exist. <coughs> And we all go through this. Because you feel as if God does not want you at all. Not your service, not you, not nothing that you have to do with. Nothing. So Ramenu is going to explain now how to repair this. Whether it's all of this that we just said, the and things similar to this, you need very great reinforcement. To strengthen yourself very, very much. Not to look at what I just told you at all. Don't look at this rejection that you're feeling at all. Don't pay attention to it. This is going to be the beginning. Of the this is what he's saying the big sodas here. This is the sodas. This is it. And we're going to get the big sodas. We're gonna, this is just the beginning. Uh, don't pay attention. Just like you saw Hashem... And Hashem Bach mistaker Allah, he's not gazing at him, he's not paying attention to him. It's like, okay, look, I might be looking at you, but then I turn my face away. You know what I mean? Like, I see you do a nice little mikve. I'll give you a little candy, a nice little sign of me, but That's know, it. get away. Or maybe it's just that Hashem is looking at him. He's seeing all this and he's just standing there like a bystander. This is the way you feel. And this, so what's Ramanu saying? Believe me, mistaker as it. Don't look at this at all. Don't even think about this. Don't even fall into the up here in your confusions into the mind to think that God's showing you rejection. Don't let it get to your head. Keep it in it because no, genuinely. 
all this rejection is actually all you're getting closer. This entire process of rejection is actually the fact that you're getting closer. I'm not even saying it is on the way to get closer, it is a journey on the way to get closer. It's all getting closer. Meaning when you're progressing forward, it's you getting closer. When you're actually being showed rejection, it's you getting closer. It's two different ways of Hashem showing that you're getting closer. But we have to program ourselves that when we're shown this rejection, it's not a rejection of the fact that you're far from Hashem. No. It's a rejection because this is a necessary part of the process. Why? That's for a different time. Why Hashem does this? It's what we were talking about in different lessons. And Hashem says to build up your ratzon, to get to the next level, right? These different things. But it's not important why you're doing that. All you need to know is that actually you're getting closer. And that's enough strength for a person to know this that it's going to bring him back to life. Let's see where he goes. And all that we said about all the tzaddikim went through this. Everyone. There's not one single tzaddik that did not go through this. Because Rabbeinu is saying every single tzaddik has gone through this. Rabbeinu himself. And Rabbeinu has stories in Sikhot Aran who Rabbi Nathan writes that Rabbeinu as a kid <laughs> used to stop doing the Yudhut some days because he felt as if, as if Hashem wasn't listening to him. And then Hashem and then Rabbeinu used to convince himself at the end of a few days he used to say and Hashem obviously is listening to me. And even though it feels as if he didn't listen to me at all, I'm still going to go do it. So he used to convince himself in this manner um, to get back in that process of praying to Hashem and getting close to Hashem. Because how many at points felt as if giving up because he felt that Hashem would not listen to anything he was doing. So Rabbeinu went through this also. Um, as we heard from their mouths, these tzaddikim mouths explicitly, that it seems to them as if Hashem is not looking at them and paying attention to them, turning to them at all. Because of the fact that they saw that for a long time that they've been seeking out and putting efforts and toiling and doing lots of Abodat Hashem to serve Hashem. They still see that for years they've been praying and doing all this stuff and they still see that they're, they're completely far. It's going to be for weeks, months, years, you know? Rabbi was saying that if the Tzadikim did not strengthen themselves and reinforce themselves not to pay attention to this rejection, meaning to go past this rejection to continue doing what they're doing, they would have stayed in the initial place. They would have never moved. They wouldn't have become tzaddikim. They wouldn't have merited what they retained, what they merit. This is the, the ultimate phrase. And the, the main thing is like this, my beloved brother. And I was just, let's not even get started on where that takes <laughs> us. Funny, exactly. And it's funny that we wanted to do this lesson because this is the point where I got to, into this lesson and I got very emotional. Because never have I ever seen a Nikot Yamaran I'm going to use this language where now he transitions from this place of teaching to this place of, it's me and you. I'm talking to you now. It's not, before it's like, all this stuff is a lesson. I'm giving it in front of many people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm a tzaddik. You know what I mean? Like, there's a disconnect. There's the tzaddik and there's the tzaddik, right? There's all these lessons where I'm going to explain his grandeur, right? And yeah, he's explaining how we can get to that place and all this stuff, how it's connected to me. But it never feels personal to the point where he's himself tapping you on the back and he's, he's giving you out. This is the first place I've seen in Nikut and Moran where Rabenu is changing the, the, the way he's speaking and now he's speaking directly to each person. Because he's saying for a person that goes through all this rejection, what we've just read until now, the entire reason why he's falling there is because he has no chizuk, he has no reinforcement. He doesn't know how to lift himself back up. Rabenu is repairing everything with these three words. Uh, or two words, Ahubi Ahi, my beloved brother, because now I'm not a tzaddik anymore. Ahi, I'm your brother. You said Ahi, bro. That's a... I'm your brother. This is this is between me and you now. Yeah. This is I'm telling you right now that whatever you're going through is actually because I went through it with you. I'm with you. I'm going to lift you up. We're going through this together. And not only that, he didn't say my brother. He said Ahubi Ahi, my beloved brother, which we're gonna see maybe could be a, a little hint to later on where. At the end of the lesson, we're going to blow our minds also. It's okay. Rabenu is, it could be hinting to something with Ahubi. Meaning, we need to, to find the love in this Avodat Hashem. We need to find back that Simcha, that Ahava, that we need to reignite within ourselves. Not this brainwashed, 
or this this habitual sort of Avodat Hashem or now you feel so depressed and you're just doing it because like this. You need to reignite that fire, that love for it. And now the man was telling you that I'm going to give you that love. I'm your brother and I love you. Chazak ve'ematmeon. And these are the same words that is brought in the Petek. Chazak ve'ematmeon. Be very strong and courageous. We know the story of Saba when Saba broke the fast on Shiva Asab and Tamu. And six days later, he opened up the book of the Likut Yalachot. And he lands on a page about Tfilin, Hashkamat Aboker, in Likut Yalachot. And he sees the note fall out. And after the entire, whatever, how long it went, he picks up the note and he sees this note. And for the first time, after six days or after years, where he feels his service is getting better, but he's still weak, the entire town is against him, his family is against him, he's been kicked out. It's only him and his wife against the entire world. And it's him, Rabenu, <laughs> it's Hashem, and everyone's against him. There's no one in the world that can, that can give him strength at this point. And he just broke Shiva Sabbath and Moon, he's feeling depressed, it said he wanted to bury himself in his own grave. Six days later, he gets a note, and what is it saying? Tanmidi Alaka, my precious student, right? Rabban was explaining to him, like, you're my student, right? This is very unique. Rabban was explaining to you, you're my brother. Same. It's, it's very weird, you know what I mean? I, I've never, there's something very unique about this phrase that I've never looked through all of the Muqan, Rabban will never, ever explain in this sort of language where he now is speaking direct, direct this yeah. person. Or, even Achi or Ahuvi Achi. This I've never heard of in my entire life, and I don't know if it ever comes up at the end. I haven't studied the end of the lesson, but this is unique. This is Chidush, complete Chidush. Chazak ve'emat me'od. Stay strong and courageous. Be very strong and courageous. This is Chazak ve'emat me'avodat cha. Na 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 Be very strong and courageous in your service. It's the same inyan. Saba went to this place of depression where he felt as if Hashem was rejecting him completely. Making him fall to the fast, you know what I mean? Breaking the fast, and we're gonna see that it wasn't Saba's fault why he fell to the fast. How? I mean, we're gonna explain at the end a chidush like you've never heard before in your life. Sometimes Hashem makes you fall. It's not your fault. <laughs> Stop. Wow. We'll explain that. This is the proof in it. But now Rabban was explaining because sometimes when you fall, it's not you at all. It's Hashem that's doing it on purpose, and that distancing that He's making you that fall that you feel far from Hashem is actually. His intention to get you closer. How? Who knows? It's God's plan, right? But you have to accept it. Now I'm going to explain to you, my beloved brother. Stay strong in your service. Because I'm explaining to you at the place of, now there's no statuses. I went through the same thing you went through, and now I'm putting myself in your shoes. You and I. Now obviously the tzaddik is so big that he can descend himself to this place of brother where he can get to this place where he speaks to you as if it's me and you. Yeah. Best friends. Sometimes Rabbi, Rabbi Nathan felt this place where Rabbi used to wrap his arm around Rabbi, Rabbi Nuh and speak to him as if he was his best friend. And sometimes Rabbi, Rabbi Nuh embarrassed Rabbi Nathan in front of everyone. Obviously for reasons only Rabbi Nuh can understand. There's differences, you know what I mean? There's different times. This is a very unique time. Stay strong and hold on to yourself with all your force to stay strong and to stay, maintain your, your service. Don't give up. Don't pay attention and don't look at all that we said about this rejection okay, and all things similar to this rejection that you feel. And if you're very, very far from Hashem, Rabbi Nuh doesn't usually repeat words like that unless it's very important. Very, very much. And we know Me'od, by the way, is, um, we know in, in the Midrash, is a reference to the Yitzhara. Um uh, there's a pasuk in the Rashid that God saw that uh, I think about one of the days that He created, one of the six days of creation, so that was very good, mm-hmm. very unique. I think it could have been a ref- reference to the third day or something. But Me'od Bereshit Chabad, the Midrash says Me'od Yetzara. Me'od is a reference to Yetzara. You could feel that you're so far from Hashem. Rachok Me'od Me'od. Not only you're enveloped in Yetzara and one <laughs> covering, you have two. It's like almost like a hastara shebetok hastara. You feel so far from Hashem that you're like in a place where you don't even want Him. It's like, forget yeah. it. <laughs> I don't want to be conscious of Hashem. I don't want any of this. You feel completely far. You feel like it's has attacked you not once or twice. You know what I mean? All this stuff. I don't know. This is maybe. But there's, there's much to there. You know what I mean? I'm not just explaining me'od, me'od for some reason. 
when he's repeating the word, it's very intentional. Like, I mean, that's what's writing this, obviously, with all the intentions in mind. Um, and it seems to you as if you're blemishing and sinning at every single moment next to God. This is in a place where a person can feel depressed. And you feel as if every single moment you're sinning next to Hashem. In even with all of what we just mentioned, okay, that note this. She a man like this, that he's so enveloped in materialism, right? He's so entrenched in this physicality. Every single movement and shift that he detaches himself from, a little bit, just a little bit, a little, little bit from his physicality, and with that detachment, he moves close to Hashem, just turning to Hashem a little bit, not close, turning, just a little turn. It's very great and very, very precious. And even a very small point that he detaches himself from his from the gashmiut of this world, from the physicality of this world, to get close to Hashem. He runs and he runs for however many thousands of parsaot. A parsa is around four kilometers, I think. Four kilometers or two kilometers, I forgot. It could be two kilometers. Two kilometers. Imagine thousands and thousands of parsaot. This sort of measurement, Ba'aramot doesn't make the supernal world. Already, this is very unique because it doesn't really make sense to describe uh, a physical distance in a place yeah, right. where there's no physicality at all. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So what's happening? It's, really it's, <laughs> it's very weird. Right. This is probably a reference to a later lesson. Or not a lesson, a parable Habenu asks us to look at at the end of this lesson that has to do with the tzaddik, or it's actually at the end here, that has to do with the tzaddik that uh, gets very sad. But um, how he picks himself back up, and how when he picks himself back up, he ends up feeling as if he, he's slowly detaching himself from this world and he gets to a place where he's running thousands of paths out. This specific measurement that he mentions again in that story. In the upper world, and he sees it. He's moving from place to place to place to place, and when he gets back into this world, he sees he hasn't even moved himself an inch from the place that he's standing. Even just, maybe just he moved the hair's breadth, which is coming to show us something very big. Rabbi was saying, even if you just make you move a toe in this world in Avodat Hashem of service of God, you just lift up a finger to open up this book because you want to pick it up, and then you close it after because you don't feel the strength. Just the fact that you moved your hand is moving thousands and thousands of miles for a person who's so far from Hashem. Or for a person who feels as if he's completely entrenched in materialism and all these things that he's suffering with. Just the fact that he opened up the book or just made a movement like this. He didn't move from his space. He maybe moved the hair's breadth with his finger, right? But Rabbi was saying he moved thousands and thousands of universes. No, already the fact that we're sitting down here and we're looking at the lesson and we're trying to discover what Abel was telling us is already, you can't even imagine thousands of universes. It's above that. You know, I mean, we can't imagine the reward of, forget the reward, on, yeah. the movements that were going on up there. Because down here it feels like as if we're doing nothing, but it's all yeah, to re- It's maybe the match that you miss and then the fire starts. Exactly. It's just, everything down here is this, this small thing, but we don't know how to take it. Take it like and to make it a big thing. This is why Rabenu is going to explain at the end of the lesson. It's also very connected. This idea of finding your good points because the second you focus on your good points and you remind them to Hashem, Hashem, this morning I put on a kippah. This morning, Hashem, I put on a pete. This morning, I put on my tzitzit. This morning, Hashem, I made a bracha. I put on my tzitzit. These small things are not small at all, but because we don't pay attention to them, we don't feel as if we're moving. But Hashem is telling us every small thing you have to start off anew. When you're entering, understand that you're entering it every single day, every single moment. Rabbi Nusra, the person sometimes has to restart anew many times a day. There's many days in a day. We don't realize how this works, but Rabbi Nusra is saying, start anew, start again, start fresh. 20 years passed, who cares? Start again right now. You only have right now. And this is what Rabbi Nusra said, you know, he's telling us, gather up your strength. 
gird your, gird your loins and you know, pick yourself back up because you're moving thousands of universes just by small things. And you feel like you haven't even moved. Instead, he comes back to the initial place, he hasn't even moved on the spot. And yet he's breaking boundaries and universes and all this stuff. Parsa also can come from the word perusa. I think Bechitza um, perusa, it's like a divided boundary or something like that. I, I remember reading this in another lesson. It's meaning even just your running can break through barriers up there in the world that we can't even understand. You're breaking through things you can't even imagine, just by small things. But understand that you're breaking through obstacles and barriers and you're going through this obstacle course that no one can go through, but you're doing that just by small things, small little things. We have to appreciate the small mitzvot that we do. And a mitzvah is not one of the 613, by the way. Amen who says a mitzvah is any single good act. So a mitzvah can be saying hi to the person. There's no mitzvah in the Torah saying you can say hi. But the fact that you gave this person a smile could be making thousands sure. of movements up there. You actually have no idea. You know? Who, who knows? As you'll understand very well from the story of the tzaddik who had sadness overcome him, which we were just talking about. As it brought by us in the story, it's a story that, it's one of Rabbeinu's parables. At the end of Sibol Masyot, he gave it small stories, you know what I mean? Take that, um, and this is one of them. But this tzaddik picked himself back up by slowly focusing on good things, you know what I mean? And the, the thing that tzaddik picked himself back up was, with was that rather than focus on the good things that he did because he could always find in ulterior motives and bad things within him, he focused on what Hashem did, which is that Hashem created you. He didn't create you a goy, he didn't create you this person who was bad, you know what I mean? He created you the way you were. And you are accomplishing things that he wants you to do. But the fact that Hashem created you a Jew already shows the fact that Hashem's act was perfect. You can always rely on the fact that when Hashem created you, it was perfect. Because God, there's no, there's no imperfection at all. So you can always rely on the idea that when Hashem created you, it was with complete perfect intention. You know what I mean? There was no flaw in that at all. And with that, he became very happy. And the Rabbeinu says sometimes if a person can't even find within himself good points that he did, does, which is important to do, like find the good thing that you did, the acts that you did, you can always rely on the fact that you were born a Jew, or that you're a Yehudi, that you have a spark of a Nishama. Because that Nishama within you is Hashem. It is Hashem. So like Rabbeinu said, the Tzadik exists in every one of you. You know what I mean? The Tzadik is not this concept of Rabbeinu and then the rest are just, uh, you know? You have Rabbeinu in you, you have Rabbeinu in you. It's right here. I have Rabbeinu in you. you have Rabbeinu in me. You see, exactly, it's right here. But you have to bring it out. And obviously it all comes through the tzaddik. The tzaddik helps you bring out the tzaddik within you because you have the faithful shepherd within each and every one of us. Moshe Rabbeinu exists in each and every one of us. But we have to bring it out. And how do you do that? With a good point. Finding the good, and finding the good, and finding the good. You go to do things like this. I remember there's another lesson where we explained how to bring out the tzaddik, but... The simcha within each and every Jew is his neshama, it's his good point. It's the point that Hashem made him. There's no flaw in that. So you can always be happy by the fact that Hashem made you a Jew. And the fact that he made you a Jew is because he saw something in you that he saw in no one else. That in itself is, you can, it can make you survive for, for years forever. and years, forever. Yeah. There's, no, there's no end to that. Because God's simcha, the simcha of finding the perfection that Hashem took, took and paid attention to you is, is everything in the world, you know? Um, and, and with this you'll become very happy and you'll strengthen yourself with great joy joy that's constant forever because know that sadness is a very great damager it damages completely and know when a man immediately wants to enter into the service of God immediately he immediately it's a very big sin that he has depression. Because what are we saying? The second a man wants to enter the Tabat Hashem, the first thing they show him is rejection. So if you fall into depression, you're just falling into the Yetzara. You're falling into exactly what the Yetzara wants you to. It's a very big sin. But, you, but nobody wants to be the depression. No, no, it, you're right. So, it, you know what I mean? But it doesn't exist. They don't control it. But it doesn't exist. Correct. Exactly. Meaning, the fact that you're being depressed over something that it's an illusion, completely. <laughs> Rabbeinu said, Venidme, Venidme. It seems to him. It seems to him. It's not real. Because he's saying, Be'emet. Ki be'emet kol ha'itkachakut hu rak kol ha'itkachakut. 
There's no such thing as rejection. It doesn't exist. Rejection, it, it doesn't fall into this at all. It's only getting closer. All these feelings and these emotions you're getting rejection is actually the Yitzhak is disguising you to feel as if you're far from Hashem, but it's not. You're actually close. So the fact that you're getting depressed is because you believe in the Yitzhak, not the Yitzhak Tov. You believe that you're far from Hashem when Hashem, Rabbi is telling you you're close. Because we don't believe that Rabbi is saying that you're close. Now that we know this, the second we feel rejected when we're getting close to Hashem, because Hashem doesn't allow us to do this, you know what I mean? Or oh, it's over, right. lesson 48, boom, done. 100%, because the second we realize that we're actually close, is the second we can dance and sing and clap our hands forever. It's finished, the job is done. It's only because we believe the Yitzhara is, is right that we get to the breast. But now that Rabbeinu said the Yitzhara never wins, as long as you're searching for Hashem and you want to get close, because he's saying, the second a person entered that without Hashem, it could be a tzaddik, it could be a person who just started, right? But he's entering that without Hashem. Second, you enter without Hashem, what, what's a person who's entering that without Hashem? He wants to see Hashem. He's getting closer to Hashem. His intentions are to find God, right? Which means, already from the initial point, all the rejection that you're getting in the thing is only because of your good motives in the, in the first place. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have felt that type of rejection or stuff if you never started in the first place, right? You're only getting this rejection because you started to serve God, because you started to find Hashem, because you started to say thank you to Hashem, because you started to do what to do, right? Which means, how does it make sense that you're starting to get close to God and now you feel rejection? Which means it's not a rejection at all. Mm -hmm. The moment you say to Hashem, Hashem, I'm ready to be close to you, I want to start doing Mincha every single day. I want to start doing Abid, or I want to start speaking to you, Hibodadut. The second you start making a step and a progression forward of saying Hashem, now I want to get close to you. Or to make that decision in your head that now I want to, to make that step forward closer to Hashem, at that moment on, all the rejection and feeling, no, it's all rooted in Emet and it's all rooted in closeness to God. It's just part of the process. But just be the Simcha because that Simcha in itself is proof that you believe that you're getting close to Hashem. Second, you fall into, into depression is because you believe that Yitzhara is winning when in truth, there's no Yitzhara at all. You're only getting closer and your intentions are good. So how can my intentions be good and me feel far because my intentions are good? It doesn't make sense. I'm really explaining, pick yourself back up because know that you're a good person and that your intentions are good and that everything, the journey that you're going on through now from the beginning to the end of your life, as long as you you make a decision in your head that you want to be close to God, or that you're, there's a chipus, there's a search for Hashem, the second you start searching, it's finished. That's it. Done. Done. This is what Saba said. The second you can, the second you fall into chipus, the second you fall into the category of I'm searching for God, right? Or I'm moving forward to God. Um, or I'm searching for the truth, right? Or I'm embedded with myself, I'm honest with myself. I want to get close to Hashem and I know how far I am, right? But I still want to get close. Even the falls that you endure after that still mean Hashem and everything. It's, it's, a big it's, 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 it's something you just it's hard, it's hard to say that because it's saying that there's no responsibility. Yeah, it's hard to say that exactly. It's hard to say because then you can just be like, oh, it's all part of the. But it, only on the condition that, that, the intention that your entire correct. intention was that you only want to get close yeah, to Hashem. Yeah. So you're going to pick, you're going to hit yourself whenever you're not doing things right, right? right. But you cannot let that get to your head and to tell you to fall to the place of where I cannot pick myself back up now or that Hashem is not close to me. Hashem is always close to you as long as you want to be close to And then how do you stay accountable? You're always accountable. All the actions that you're not doing, you realize are far from Hashem, right? The fact that... But knowingly doing something is premeditated. Yeah, the, meaning the entire condition of what we're speaking about is that the fact that you only want to get close to it. So the fact that you're saying, um, now I'm going to sin but I'm not responsible for it, is already with an ulterior motive that exactly. you don't want to get close to God. Exactly, so it's bad. No, that, 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 that's not emet. We're saying the entire condition has to be emet. Meaning, your search is for Hashem. I just want to be close to God. I don't care about my own Maba. Forget my own Maba for a second. In this world, I just want to take the Simcha and the Mitzvah to dance. I want to put on my tefillin and dance with my tefillin on. Sorry. Who can take that from me? Yeah. yeah. You know? And when you're at that point where you want to be with Hashem, just be with Hashem, you know? to go with the Torah and the mitzvot and to realize that yes, you might be far, but you just want to be next to him, the journey is, the journey is in God's hand. That's it. Don't worry, don't go into the Bilburim. And I was talking to someone today and he gave me a tremendous chizuk. And funny enough, it fit perfectly into this lesson is that 
we cause ourselves our own damage up here. This is why he says, don't fall in your head, in your mind. Because it's all up here. It's all an illusion. The Yitzhak is trying to convince you that you're not close, but it's all up here. You are close. Because your search from the beginning was with that point that you wanted to be close to Hashem. It was emet. There's nothing wrong about it. It's just you want to be close to Hashem. There's no flaw. See? So that's, on that condition that you want to be close to Hashem, that you're searching, the rest is in Hashem's hands. Let Hashem take care of it. Everyone, everyone will fall. Yes, you have to be accountable. You have to tell it yourself. This is not right because the Alakas says I shouldn't do this, right? So yeah, I didn't do this right. But Hashem, I want to be close to you. Hashem is not going to, Hashem is not a dictator. We know in the Gemara, but like, ah, Hashem is not, does not rule with tyranny over his, his creatures. He understands, you know? All we have to do is have that son, the desire to be close to Hashem. That's all our job. I don't know, we're just something to this. You know what I mean? It's like when you're in prayer, our job is not to, to speak the words. The words are from the Neshama. They're our tefillot. And I was listening to Abik Kedush on, on Shabbat, a, a big blessing. Paul and I were, were talking with uh, the big blessing. Is it about listening? And what listening to the words you're praying, yeah. right? That's, our job is to listen. Okay. It's, the words are from our Neshama. They, yeah. they don't belong to us. We're not talking. We're not talking. It's Hashem speaking from within us. Like it's the Neshama that's screaming out to Hashem to pray. When we're doing shacharit, to listen to the words. I'll sing to God with my little bit. When we're listening, we shouldn't, we shouldn't just say the words in, in like this. We listen to the words you're saying. Our job is to listen. So it was, it was something that I, that I, took, a lot, I took a lot of kizuk and reinforcement from because a lot of the time we get so sophisticated. Our job is just to, to want the good thing and just to move forward. Do our best. That's it. Do our best. It's very simple. Do your best. <laughs> and Rabbeinu continues. Chaz Hashem ki atvud yisitcha. Rabbeinu says it's a very big sin to fall into atvud sadness. Because atvud sadness, depression, is the yitzah. It's the evil side. They're the one and the same thing. The Hashem Yitbach soneata. And Hashem Yitbach hates this thing. He hates it. He hates sadness. Don't think that there's a good place of sadness, dep depression specifically. A broken heart is different. A broken heart is this broken heart that I feel far from Hashem, but I want to get close, right? There's the want that's still there. Depression is that you forget the want. Mm. The ratzon is gone. So that's different. Different completely. <laughs> Two different sides. One is very precious. Broken heart is very precious. Meaning, Hashem, I know I did this. He bought You have to explain the things that you do wrong, you know? Yeah, confession. It's confession, but it's a confession from the place of I want to get better. A good is depression to the place where you can't move. Done. I feel give up. I give up. That's the worst. That's the worst. It's a fine line. It's a very fine line, but that's why Rabbeinu says you have to do the simcha all the time. Because with simcha, with broken heartedness, it can easily lead into depression. If you stay in that, that constant... That's yeah, so why you have to dip quick. Yeah, that's what you do your Yibodadut. And after your Yibodadut, you, 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 you find your good points, specifically. At the end of your Yibodadut, always find the good. Hashem, today, I did Yibodadut. I sat down and I set the time to speak to you. Today, I shall be back. I put on feeding. Not only did I put on feeding, I did an extra feeding today. You know what I mean? to it simply. You know what I mean? And go into it. Find find the good points. And at the end of all that, Hashem, you made me a year. That's it. It's finished. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Yitzhak is gone. Yeah. It's done. Finished. Rabbi was going to find something huge. The Tzarek liyot akshan gadol babodat Hashem. A person must be a stubborn necked person in serving God. You have to be stubborn. Not to move from your place. Meaning, the Yitzhak is going to try to push you back. No, I'm standing firm. What does that mean? Not to move from your place. Meaning, the little avodat Hashem that you began to do, meaning, don't, don't regress from that little thing you began starting, no matter what happens to you. Continue. Just continue doing you. Don't pay attention to the rejection of feelings. And remember this thing very, very well. You'll need this very much. When you begin a little bit to serve God, because you need a great, a very, very great stubbornness to be strong and courageous. Stubborn. 
Don't let the Yitzhakah push you. Don't let your parents push you. Don't let your, uh, your, your this or that, even your wife at one point, you know what I mean? It's all, it's all to the thing. You have to be in your head deciding that's me and Hashem. You know what I mean? Everything is for me and Hashem. Every single act. Everything. So even if your wife's going to push you back, when I got an extreme example, even if your, your father, your mother, your father-in-law, right? I mean, I went through all of this. Father-in-law, wife. They were all pushing him away from the tzaddik. He said, no. I bet who wanted to teach him Mishnayot for the first time. Mishnayot is like the first thing you study when you're in kindergarten, you know? Um, and Rabbi Nathan already knew Mishnah of Kohl's. He knew the Gemara already by the age of 30, 13 and everything. He was going to be Dayan, head judge of over 70 provinces in Ukraine. I think already at one point he was already doing that with his father in law. Father in law appointed him. He came to Rabbeinu for the first time and Rabbeinu gave him a book called Shitre Ariza, Praises of the Ariza, read books of stories of the Ariza. Stories of the Ariza. I was teaching him, I need you to be my student. I need you to be the Rabbi Chaim Vitar of the Ariza. Understand what it means to be a student of the, of the Tzadik. This is your next role. Not only that, he gave him Mishnayot to study every day. Mishnayot, kindergarten thing. We start from the beginning. 18 Mishnayot a day. And when his father-in-law sees Rabbi Nathan studying Mishnayot, who is this person that gave you Mishnayot? You're Rabbi Nathan of Chesed. You're, you're Bedin, you're Ab Bedin. You're studying Mishnayot? You know what Rabbi Nathan said? I start over with Aleph Bet. I don't even know what Aleph Bet is anymore. I start over. That's why Rabbi Nathan is Rabbi Nathan. Because everything we know of Rabbeinu, everything we can know of Rabbeinu is only when we forget everything that we thought we knew. Forget everything you think you know. Forget Aleph Bet. Forget that Aleph is Aleph. Forget that Bet is Bet. Second you start with Rabbeinu, you come fresh. It's like the Tzadik Rabbi Zera who went uh, from Babel to Eretz Israel and moved from Iraq, uh, Iraq to Israel. This was thousands of years ago, the time of Maha. And uh, he, he fasted 40 days to forget the Talmud Babli, to forget the, to, the, the Gemara that he had studied. He fasted 40 days to forget the Torah. People today are fasting 40 days to remember Talmud Babli. He's fasting 40 days to forget. Because when you get to Eretz Israel, it's the Torah of the Geula, the redemption. Babel in Iraq, there's machloket, it's argument. There's no shalom. He understood that to get to Eretz Yisrael, you have to forget everything you know and to start over. This is the biggest principle. When you come to Rabbeinu, the tzaddik I met, who is Eretz Yisrael, you have to forget everything you think you know. All the things that I think I know, that I should do this and this thing, all the Gemara that I thought I knew before I studied Rabbeinu, that I, you know what I mean, that I thought I knew this Gemara, brachot, start over. I, I don't know it. Start again. Rabbi Nathan didn't know what Aleph and Aleph is. Beth and Beth. You know what I mean? All this stuff. There's even places in... in Nikut HaRachot, Nikut HaMoran, the original books, you know, that they, they wrote things a little differently. And we were talking about this yesterday in our Shabbat, that they, the gr- grammatical, pu- the punctuation and stuff like that could be off in, uh, in the way, in the Hebrew language, you know what I mean? There's, there's some inconsistencies. But Rabbeinu knew that. He's obviously writing something very differently. He's not putting above here and he's putting above there. An accident. Not by accident, clearly. Rabbi Nathan, the same thing. We have to understand this, and we have to believe that when they're writing this, they're they're doing this exactly because they know exactly what they're doing. And we have to be here the emuna. And when we have that emuna, we can attain their levels. Rabbi Nathan said, "You know how to become like Rabbeinu?" And I felt as if I was on the shoulder of a giant. The way we become Rabbeinu, because Rabbeinu said, "I want my students to become kamoni mamash, like me." Literally, there's no difference between me and my students. How? When you realize. That there's that I don't know Rabbi. The second you realize that you don't know Rabbi, the second you realize you don't know anything, is the second you can take in everything that Rabbi knows. Can you make yourself a vessel that's completely empty? Rabbi fills up everything. Hashem will fill you up with all His light. And the second Hashem fills you up with all His light, there's no there's no me thinking here. There's no one drop in the glass in the vessel that is from me. It's all from Hashem. Which means you're going to be a, a vessel for God's light. For this is why Rabbi Nathan became the student of Rabbeinu because he was the moon. The moon reject, it reflects all the light from the sun. The moon has no, no light of its own, it's poor. The lit lami garmakrum has nothing of its own. This is Rabbi Nathan. Rabbi Nathan, when he started with Rabbeinu, had nothing of its own. Alephbeth, Mishnayot. This is Rabbi Nathan, this is Rabbeinu. So, Rabbeinu is saying like this you need to be very stubborn. 
to be strong and courageous, to hold on to yourself, to, to grab on, maintain his position. Even if they make him fall. See the, the, see the language here? It's not even if you fall. Even if they up there make you fall. Why they? Singular. So that's a good question also. Could be maybe Hashem and a Tzadik. Plural word. The, the tzaddik and Hashem both want you to fall because they both have a, they, they're both in, the, in this plan that they need you to they need you to fall. The tzaddik just wants what Hashem wants. So exactly. If Hashem wanted you to win, you'd also totally. But they're they're in this partnership right now, and also we know in the Gemara that Hashem didn't do anything in this world without consulting the tzaddik. In fact, when he created the world, in Sefer Hamidot, Rabbi Menuhin writes that Hashem consulted all the tzaddik before he created the world. That's the permission. Rabbi wants that. When Hashem wants to execute something, he also asks Rabbeinu's permission. Very unique concept. Craziest thing ever heard. Yeah, obviously, because Rabbeinu knows from his mind that exactly what Hashem wants. Because he's emet lamito, he's the truth of Hashem's truth. He's the ultimate truth of Hashem. Rabbeinu is the, the single point at the beginning of time that Hashem had that, that was, you know what I mean? That, that was it. That was it. That, that was the, you know what I mean? What he wanted, initially. Before it became this confusion of whether I should create the world, man's gonna sin or not, all this stuff. Before that, at the beginning of time, this entire concept of tshuva, that everything is for the best, you know what I mean? This is all the tzaddik. Rabenu, Rabenu is at that place. Rabenu is, um, so this is what, I don't know what the language of the day is. It could be this or it could be the Malachi and Hashem. You know? Who, who knows? But there's some things going on up there. The Bedi. Mapirin, the Bedi, when they sign something, they are decreeing it. Who knows? But Hashem is making you fall up there. And this is the, the unique thing of Rabbeinu. When you really take the words of Rabbeinu and you begin to look at the punctuation and the grammar of what he's saying, it's precise. It's not Af'im Nafal. You know what I mean? Even if he fell. It's Af'im Mapirin, even if they make you fall. Because they are making you fall. But you're not realizing, you think it's you. It's not you at all. Because your initial intention was completely good. You only want the best. You only want to get close to Hashem. You only want to jump over all these desires, right? So they're making you fall. All the time. Not just once. Many, many times. Every single time you want to enter a table of Hashem. Look at this. Because it is, because there are times that they make him fall from his Avodat Hashem. Kaya Dua, as is known in, uh, with regard to David HaMelech, with Bathsheba, and lots of things like this. That we can't understand why David fell, because it's a very unique concept. It's something unique. Just know it's, it's all for, to get you closer. That's all you need to know. Afar, Pichen, even so, Allah al-Asod it's upon you to do what you're your only responsibility is like this. The fall is, is out of your hand because you only want the best. But your responsibility is how you react. I want to get still closer. I don't want to stop because I fall. They tested me. What happened after you fall? Am I going to stay in the same place? And I'm going, am I going to regress? I have one foot inside the door of holiness. Am I going to step back and completely leave? Or am I going to continue doing forward what I'm doing? Going to the big day once in a week or, you know what I mean? Doing what I'm doing, not getting discouraged. To do what you're able to do in Avodah Hashem. Don't let yourself fall completely. Because all these falls, these descents, these confusions, and all these th things that are fall in this category, you need and you're obligated to go through these things. Before you enter the gates of Kedusha, holiness. And all the Jews Tzadikim went through this. Veda, I know like this. Rabbi was saying there's a person who's literally right next to the door of holiness. He's about to enter all the lights about to shine on him. He's about to get the chokhmah, he's about to get everything. He's about to see Hashem with his own eyes. And he ends up walking back. Because of the confusions that are plaguing him in mind. Because of the rejection. He's getting to his head. And because of the rejection, he believes he's far, he falls, he leaves. Or Shehazayim. Or that then, when he's right next to the opening, it's going to get stronger sometimes. And 
it continues to instigate against him very much. Hashem, have mercy. Right when you're next to it, you're going to see a Yitzhak. It's so big right next to you. They don't allow you to, to enter to the gates. Right? They're not letting you. It's blocked. You cannot get them. The door is locked. Well, that's a way to deal with it, right? Because of this, he goes back. But it's not going back, falling. What we say is going back is after the fall, how you react. Because we know we always fall. There's no such thing as like this. There's this, 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 yeah. this. How do you react after this fall? Am I going to still try? I did a sin, right? Am I going to still do mincha? Or am I, do I give up because Hashem doesn't want my mincha? See the difference? A true chassid is someone who understands, a true student of Rabbeinu is someone who understands that even after the fall, no, that's when Hashem wants my tefillah right now. Because that's the entire test. Am I proving to Hashem that the Yetzara is right that I've fallen? Or am I proving to Hashem that actually I'm actually getting closer because of the fact that I fell? You could use it into, yeah, it's crazy. You could either, you're going to fall. You can either fall and do the second sin, or you can fall and get, make it even Repair bigger. it yeah, into Yeah, repair it into That's what we're going to say. This is the biggest thing here. Because it's the path of the, the way of the Yetzara, and the, the evil side is that when they see a person in Samuch Samuch Mamash, he's next to, next to, literally. He's one foot in the door, the next minute he's about to enter into the path of holiness, he's about to have all the light shining on him. He's about to get illumination from, from Atsilut, you know what I mean? That's where the second before is about to be crazy. Second before, it's, that's where it gets hardest. It's like the, the light is, the night is darkest before the dawn, right? This year. <laughs> it's the same idea, they get it from this. Why? He's about to enter. Overcomes this person with all its strength very, very much. God forbid. Therefore, you need to gather up all your strengths again. Strengthen, uh, strengths again. And we heard from a true tzaddik that said, that if one person had told him, no matter what had happened, um, um, at the time where he was starting in Abad at the beginning, the study is saying, if someone told me at the beginning of my Abad Hashem, when I was going through all this suffering, these confusions and this rejection, what we just said, all this stuff, Achi, if a person would have told this tzaddik, my brother, why my brother? Rabbi has a very unique inyan with my brother. Oh, my brother. Didn't tell me it's not for his health. It's not, it's not for his health. It's a very precise thing. Strengthen and hold on to yourself. I would have run and been very quick to, to, to enter into God's service. I would have done everything. Because upon this study too, all of what we just said happened. History repeated. And what happened? What was the problem? He didn't hear one reinforcement from any single person. This is what Abenu said. I wish I had a teacher like me. You guys, you students are lucky because I wish I had a teacher like me. Who gives chizu to his students. Because this is the entire point. It's not about the fall. It's about the chizu that you pick yourself back up from that fall. That's the reparation of everything. That turns the sins into mitzvot. That turns all those falls into a sense. It's when you hold on to yourself and you scream, Hashem, where are you? Because you haven't given up. What's this ayeh scream? Ayeh mekom kebodo. Hashem, where is the place of a glory? That's when you fall into a place which is so far from Hashem, you think Hashem is not there, right? But the fact that you're screaming, Hashem, where are you? Is proof that you believe that Hashem is next to you. Yeah, it, it, it it's insinuates. Actually, it's, yeah, it's, it's exactly what you said. It's this idea that you believe that you have a way back. The second you believe and you're searching for a way back, even after you fall, is the reparation in itself. Whatever happened afterwards, not your problem. That is the reparation, the scream, the belief, the emunah that Hashem is right there. We can't even, under, we can't even begin to understand this because we, we understand this entirely because we go through this all the time. But we can't even understand the effects that this does up there. When we constantly search for Hashem, low, high, this is everything. 
Rabbeinu is explaining the secret to life right now because a person, you always feel as if you're going like this. Pick yourself back up after those moments. Those picking back up. Those picking back up. All those descents that you went like this for the past 25 years, let's say you're irreligious, this, that, you came from a dark place, right? The second you pick yourself back up and you start to begin to find yourself and you say, Hashem, I'm searching for you, all those descents end up being lifted back up into the midfield. It, it reciprocates. The fall doesn't go like this. It doesn't look like this anymore. It looks like this. Can't understand the effect. And the Rabbanu continues. This person, didn't, this tzaddik, didn't hear any reinforcement from any single person. And therefore, one who wants, let's say, he has chatzon, one who wants to enter into the service of Hashem, he's also to say, remember this very good, very well. Remember this carefully. Hold on to yourself very much. Do what you can in serving God. As many days and years go on, it's certain that you're going to enter into the, into, um, into this path. Into the, the service of Hashem. And Hashem is going to help you. That with the help of Hashem, you're going to enter into the gates of holiness as long as you hold yourself up. Because Hashem in Bach is full of mercy and He wants our service very much. Veda, I know. Shekol, Atnuot, Ve'atakot, Shatan, Yitzak, 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 Or we say, all the movements and shifts that we detach ourselves from the physicality of this world into the service of God. Kulam, Yitzak, 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 All those little movements that we make, detaching ourselves from physicality, moving from bad to doing good, they gather in, they join in, they tie themselves, and they come to help you at your time of need. Which is at a time where you're very far, you're in a serious trouble, parasa, whatever it can be. All those movements and shifts that you make from the physical world into the spiritual realm, they all come and they all testify for you for good. Huge. That is, whenever a person suffers from a, a very pressing and uh, a time of trouble. They all come to him at his time of need. And this is the phrase I was talking about. That Rabbeinu um, was, this is a, a phrase that's never been heard before. Veda, no. Shadam sarich lavor al keshat sar meod. Person must cross a very narrow bridge. Meod meod. A very, very narrow bridge. The akran da The principle and the main idea is like this, the essential idea is like this. Sheloi pachetka, not to fear. Because the fear in itself is what we were just saying. It's the, it's the depression. You believe that you're not moving close to Hashem. The second you don't fear it, the second you understand that it's actually all to get close. It's all for the purpose of getting close. This rejection is Hashem's way of showing you I love you. It's a weird way to show it, Nicole. Weird way to show it? Yeah. But we can understand it. It's perfectly genius because Hashem knows his exact thing. There's a reason also. 100% reason. It's, it's everything Hashem... He knows everything, you know, and it's the exact way to get us close to you, to go close to Hashem. Very, very narrow bridge. This is the, one of the most famous lines in all of Chesed Torah. The world's a very narrow bridge, but the main thing is not to be afraid. The very, very narrow bridge. Who walks a narrow bridge and doesn't fall? And not only a narrow bridge, a very, very narrow bridge. Could be this wide. Yeah. You're falling. You're falling. 100% falling. But to know that you're going to fall, that's fine. But I'm not saying just don't be afraid. Because the second you're afraid of falling, the second you realize when you fall, that's when you, when you fall all the time. The fall comes how you react after the fall. That's the real fall. Because that's your decision. That's in your hands. The head. fall is in you. The fall. The fall isn't the fall at all. Or what we think of as the fall. The fall is the reaction of the fall. Or the fall. That's right. huge. That's actually huge. That's Everything actually we go through is completely in Hashem's hand, and Hashem has a way of manipulating things that, you know what I mean? For years you were far from the gate of holiness, but on your. For a reason. When you're 60 years old, you have a thought of Juba. And it sparks as something. It's, it's the craziest crazy. thing ever. It's a gift. The fact that. Forget age for a second. Each and every person, no one knows what happened up there, but it's our job to do what we can. I should put you in a certain place at a certain time and he gave you the difficulty that he, because he knows that. 
You know what I mean? He knows that you are going through this difficult time. You grew up in this place, your religion is this, that, from far from Hashem. And you only discovered Hashem when you were 30 years old. 40 years old, 50 years old. That discovery is Mida Shalani. Just like the past 30 years were. It's not your fault where you grew up. But the second you realize you want to enter Hashem, now it's in your hand to react in the proper manner whenever you experience those faults. Because they're going to show you rejection. The second person starts doing something, it's not easy. Rashi says, All the beginnings are difficult. This is a fundamental thing in Torah. No one teaches this. And this, back then, imagine the time. Imagine how big of a Kiddush Chabem was when he's teaching things like this. Because back then, it was all very, like this. Black and white. Black and white. You know what I mean? If you're not sending Torah, this is a fault. They're not doing this, it's like this. Breast suburbs were suffering for years, getting rocks thrown at them. And I mean, at the mikveh, clothing was getting stolen while he was dipping in the mikveh. People would take his clothing and throw them out of the, into the streets. Uh, his wife was getting thrown stones at him. Why? Because he decided that he knew this was a man. You have to go through things that we can't even imagine in this world. You know what I mean? A person goes through a very narrow bridge. This, this world's a narrow bridge. <laughs> you know what I mean? This decision, this decision, who knows? You know what I mean? Confusion, this, that, and then you fall, and then you don't know how to pick yourself back up. This is a very narrow bridge. The main thing is to understand that you know you're going to fall. But what? Don't be afraid. Because the main test is how you pick yourself back up after that. To know that Hashem still wants you. To know that Hashem is still there and He's waiting for you to make another movement. It's to continue moving, doing the thing that we're doing, even if we fall. Now obviously it's not to want to fall, Chaz Hashem, that's just twisted. We don't want to fall, we want to get close. And by force that we have to go through these nefilot, these falls, these descents. How do we react? Vida. This is a parable that, I was, that we were talking about earlier. This is very unique. I don't know what it means at all. Sheyesh ina, there's a tree. Shegderi malavari, and on this tree grow many leaves. Or leaves. Shekol alle, tzarech liyot gadim meyashanim. Each and every leaf takes a hundred years to grow, to mature. Vehu nimtza ba pardesim shel asarim. This is found in the nobles, in the orchards of the noblemen. These trees. There's very special leaves. It's only found with people who have very big statuses. And they call these trees 100 years. And most likely, when it grows to 100 years, after 100 years, it's certain that it's already experienced a journey of what we can't even imagine. It, it went through this process of whatever it did. Each and every leaf, according to the way it went. Each and every person, according to the way he goes. And afterwards, at the end of these hundred years, it shoots out a, a blasting voice, a great voice, like a cannon. It screams from the bottom of its uh, roots. <laughs> Who knows? They call this cannon an Ormatia. Right? Everything in this, in this parable uh, is extremely so deep we can't even begin to understand but in Yiddish they call this canon or matia or matia whatever that means it means canon in Yiddish okay understand this parable very well the craziest thing because I don't even understand <laughs> I don't understand exactly one excerpt so I can say it like this Hashem just sent me something Ilan is a person a tree is a person because man is the tree of the field, it's in Bereshit. This could be a reference to someone who I don't know what leaves are in this parable. That's the but a person goes through a hundred years of maturing. Yeah, each and every each year. Wait, what, what's no, a leaf? Usually leaves that are falling every year season. Correct. But so the falling re reverts to growing afterwards. Yeah. Yes. There's times you fall, there's times you grow. Not really, uh, what? They are falling and they are not getting back. New ones are. Uh, new ones. Those but you're a new person. It seems that the cells are growing. Hmm. But he's saying each leaf goes through something. Each leaf, mm -hmm. it, it's gone through something. Rabbeinu would have said, Rabbeinu wouldn't say each leaf is going through something over the hundred years if it's not the same leaf. See what I'm saying? Meaning the leaf falls, a new leaf grows, but it's actually the same leaf. 
person grows, a person falls. <laughs> the tree has things that fall off it. Sometimes you do things wrong with this limb. Sometimes you do things wrong with this limb. You feel like with your mind, you know? Oh. You get a new thing. Maybe they fall, they grow, they fall, they grow. But the tree, it stays stay. always there uh -huh. and it grows and it's going up. Huh. It's going to help to... Shh. <laughs> yes. Things it it could be thoughts. I don't know. We can interpret this in many ways. That I, I'm sure someone who really who knows Gaben yeah, yeah, could yeah. look at this and say, yeah, "Why does Gaben speak about a leaf? Why does Gaben? Why does Gaben Nathan call his book Alim Trufa, the leaves of healing, letters to the sun, in the form of Yitzchak Yitzchak's hood? Leaves, uh, leaves is. of healing, pages of healing, letters of healing, words of healing." So we need healing. Right. But the Torah is compared yeah. to a tree also. Torah is compared to man. I know man is compared to a tree. Maybe Torah. I don't know. I, I know Rabbi don't bring the parable man is compared to a tree all the time. Mm. Okay. So it makes sense. That's the Adim is interesting. The, the leaves are. Leaves, leaves could be something regardless of that. It takes 100 years to mature, meaning <laughs> year after year after year. You go through whatever you go through. You go through experiences, no one can tell you what you went through. At the end of 100 years, you have a life story that no one can ever experience in their lives. You know what I mean? Right, because it's too many variables to, so many. to match it's on another off chance. Yeah, yeah. a sense falls. No one will ever go through, even in the one exact day, one. what you went through. Uh, right. In the same thing. No one. You can spend the same day with the same person, the exact same thing, and you'll go through something completely different than you. Because no one's on the same level, also. It's certain that he goes through what he goes through. Over a lot much over. This person, this leaf goes through an experience that no one can, can tell you what it went through. And at the end of these hundred years, I don't know why he chooses a hundred years also. It's very interesting. Why a hundred? It's for sure a reason. hundred percent a reason. I Probably a hundred reasons. Maybe that's something. Don't read it. What? But rather a hundred. It, there's, there's something very unique about that. There's a phrase in the Gemara that, that says um, something like this, but I don't know what has to do with that. But, who yore be kol gadol kemok He shoots out a big voice, like a cannon. Shoots out a big voice. And they call this ormatia, in Yiddish a cannon. Why, why do we bring that word in Yiddish? We know what the word in Hebrew means. Why do we need it in Yiddish, first off? Which means in the Yiddish, there's letters and things that are decent to us. But the audience was maybe uh, mostly... Uh... But why give the entire Torah in Hebrew in one word? Yeah. Maybe at that time, the word Canaan was not uh, in Hebrew. I don't know. It's possible. But obviously, when Rabban was using a word in Yiddish, and especially in quotes like this, there's something deep about the word that he brings. Meaning, even in the Yiddish, why in the Petek does he bring a phrase in Yiddish completely? Rather than the entire thing is Hebrew. Uh, my fire will burn through Mashiach's coming is in Yiddish, not in Hebrew in the Petek. Why? Because there's letters and things, thing. there's something there, a Kavanah there that cannot be written in the Hebrew word. Or it needs a Yiddish here, this specific example. Or Matthew. I don't know what, but something to look at. The Aven and Shalitif understand this parable very well. It seems like the story of our life. I don't know how. But this but is what telling us to understand the parable well. It's because there has to be a way to understand it. Hundred percent. I'm sure that if we were to look at something else, if we were to take the parables or the the subjects of each and every single thing in this parable, which is a tree, a leaf, a cannon, a what a hundred is, you know what I mean? Uh, reasons for growing. All these, all these things. If we were to look in Rabbeinu's work, we'd find all the answers. Obviously, I don't have that that expertise in, in yeah. Rabbeinu's work yeah. to know all this stuff. So, and what is the, the orchards of the nobleman? That's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> but pardon this, seems should I say, why do these trees only grow in the, in the orchard of the nobleman? Maybe no, because, no. what's Sarim? Sar is an officer. Do you know what's Sar? Ki sarit Why was Israel, Yaakov, named Israel? Because you fought with an angel of God. Sarita. Why is it found in the orchard of the nobleman? Sarim. It's not really nobleman. It's in, it's in the orchard of those who fight. These trees that grow and take 100 years to mature can only build up to 100 years of maturing only because you fight for 100 years. 
If you stay in the same place, you won't have a tree this big in 100 years. Mm-hmm. You have a tree this big. Yeah. And at that point, it's not for people who deserve a... People who fight, it's for people who are weak. These are only found in the orchards of people who fight. These trees. Who knows? No, it's fitting for a person. A person must go with what is said in the Torah. I was singing to Hashem with my little bit, which speaks about what? To search, to seek out, in to find the Hatmo within himself a single merit or a single good point. With that little good that you find within yourself, that's purely good, you'll be happy and strengthen yourself. And you won't regress from your place. You won't allow yourself to be thrown off by the rejection. Even if you fell to what you fell, God forbid. Strengthen yourself with a little good that you can still find. Adashalisken says a person can only do chuba when he does this. To do true chuba, which we do what we were just saying. Only when you find the good. Mm-hmm. You cannot do chuba except if you find the good. Not only that, Rabbeinu says that. When you find the good in others, accept them to do chuba. Rabbeinu opens up them. Hashem opens up the hands to accept these people to do chuba. Even a Rasha Gamur, a very far person, you have to find good points in that person. It doesn't mean to judge the bad that he does good. That, because the bad is the bad. No, but find the good that he does. Find the good that he does. This evil person said hi to uh, the storekeeper. Make a, make a big deal about that hi to Hashem. Tell Hashem, Hashem, look at the hi he said. Not only did he say it with... Uh, he smiled. He smiled. He, he did hand yeah. motions, you know, whatever it was. And he was in a rush, you know. When you do that, you accept, you allow this person to do tshuva. Because the Rabbeinu said the only way to do tshuva is to do this. Lechol hazdonot yun asim zechuyot. All these intentional sins that you do will be turned into mitzvot, merit. When you merit to find the good point within yourself, to pick yourself back up when you fall, which we were just talking about, not to let the rejection get to your head. Not to fall, lipol bedato, to fall in your head. To believe that there's a way back, to know that there's a way back, to know that there's a way back. And just remember what happened to the Bashantov. We're literally done with the lesson, four lines. Remember what happened to the Bashantov? May his um, may his merit, may the merit of the Tzaddik be for a blessing. Arayam, when he was on the sea to travel to Eretz Israel, when the Yitzhara went and attacked. What happened? The, the story is very long. I think it's a very famous story. But I think one of the things that Abedo might be referring to here is where the Yitzhak tells the Baal Shem Tov that if you decide to go to Eretz Yisrael, it's either you decide to throw off your child off for to be child with his daughter, it's a famous story, or throw off your books. There's a very famous story in how Abedo plays into that story. He oh. somehow gets what he wants and uh, yeah. the other thing also. Yeah, it's it's unique because Bashem Tov had so much, he was revolutionary. He's the tzaddik of the generation, right? Uh, a tzaddik had never been seen till the likes of the Arizad, you know what I mean? Bashem Tov. And he had written works that were Chidushim. He's the founder of Chasidut, right? So imagine the work that he's doing compared to everyone else. It's Chidushim and novelties that can can't be replaced. And he's traveling with them to Israel to go meet the Or Chaim, Rabbi Chaim Ben Atta. And while he's on the way, the Yitzhak says if he sees that if he's going to meet the Or Chaim, they're going to bring them to Mashiach. To know if, he, if, he, if he had met him, wow. he never got there. And while he's on the way, the Yitzhak says, you don't move further, or it's under two things right now. You either throw your daughter on board. And then you can move forward. Move forward. Okay. Or, you throw off your books. All your teachings for the past however many years you've been teaching, all those, that light that you need to spread to the world, it's your decision. What happened? <clears throat> the daughter sacrificed herself and said, I'm going off. 
So you can spread the light. Insane. She jumped off, and then while she's off in the, in the thing, the Yetzirah throws her off board, the, the Satan throws her off board. From the water, she starts screaming, Abba, Abba, take me out. And the Bashantov takes her out and asks her what happened. And she tells him that um, you need to throw off all your books because I see that I'm going to have a great grandson that's going to be even bigger than you. I mean, oh, yes. Or a grandson that's going to be bigger than you. I mean, exactly. So he threw off all the, all the books. And not only that, not only that, while he was traveling there, it got to the point where, this is like in, in, in the, even before the story, where the Yetzirah told the Bashaito, if you continue to go to Eretz Yisrael, I will take away all your knowledge of how to read. Who, 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 if the Yetzirah said this? The Bashaito, this is before the story. What how I could the Yetzirah have so much power to do for such a big Because he was act. such a G, yeah. You have to. You, there's a lot of. Uh, as much good, there's as much bad. Totally. So, he said, okay, I'll go there as an ignoramus. I won't know how to read Alphabet. And the Yetzirah took away his, his knowledge to the point where he couldn't even read a bracha. Didn't know how to pronounce Baucha Tashen. <laughs> Crazy thing. So, this is what it requires to be so strong. And Ahmed was saying, Remember the story of the Bashemto when he was on the sea when the Yitzhak instigated his force against him. Don't let anything get in your way to, to do a holy act. You know what I mean? Don't let the Yitzhak get in your way to think that you're no one. Do you. It's not your problem whether you fall, whether you forget the Aleph bit, whether you, you know what I mean, you lose all your books. Forget it. Just do you. From that story, you'll understand it. From all we ju- what we just said. You understand until where a person must go until reinforcing himself not to give up. Not to give up on yourself. No matter what happens to you. The essential. To be happy with all that you can. Even through foolish acts. To make yourself like a fool. To do all sorts of foolish things, joking things, jumping, dancing. It's a very great thing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So, like, let me just go with the hibernate and digest that because <laughs> I'm going to need about eight months. Um, you know, this is like uh, similar to um, a story with Abinatan before you even met Alenu. Famous story that Rabbi Nathan um, was always searching for the tzaddik that he, that he wanted. A tzaddik that could lead him on a path to Allah Hashem, that he was searching for since his youth. Even once he was a kid, three or four, he was already asking questions that was leading him on a path to find the, the emet. You know, the truth. And he ended up becoming a student of one big tzaddik to another one. And he ended up getting to a place where he became a student of the Rabbi Levi Tzaddik, a big, big tzaddik. Rabbeinu praised the tzaddik very much to show you this great level of the tzaddik. That he was one of the only tzaddikim Rabbeinu really praised him, like specifically. And Rabbeinu praised him tremendously. And uh, Rabbi Nathan, this was before he met Rabbeinu. He was his student. He even wrote part of his sefer. He's a very big famous tzaddik. Who's, who, this book is called Kedushan Levi. He wrote part of the book, Kedushan Levi, Rabbi Nathan. And Rabbi Levi Tzaddik, by the same color, Nasale, as a nickname, you know. Very close to this tzaddik. But even so, I mean, I can still felt something missing. That final piece that's going to bring him over the edge, you know? Going to bring him the place he needs to be. And they came to a place where he was continuing to ask Hashem for this, to find his tzaddik. And he, one Saturday night, it was customary that they would do Melave Marka. And they used to spin the bottle for who would go buy the bread. They landed on Hamiyata. Rabbi Nathan gets out of the house and he's starting to walk to the bagel, fa- the, the bagel fl- spot to buy the, the bagels from Minat Amarka. What happens? Why is he on the way? He's so upset. He's telling Hashem, Hashem, I'm not here to buy bagels in this world. You know? I'm here to search for the truth. What happens? He takes a detour. He goes into the Bet Midrash, Bet Knesset, and he goes into the women's section and he starts reading to him and crying. Crying? Yeah. To hide himself from people he didn't want to see. Oh, I see. 
It was already late at night and stuff, you know, but we didn't want to see anyone. But he goes there and he starts crying and dating. And he falls asleep. And while he's sleeping, he has a dream. He's climbing one rung of a ladder at a time and he falls. Another ladder falls. Another point in the ladder and he falls and he gets higher and higher each and every time after he falls. The place where he gets climbs up, he's about to climb on the top of the ladder and he's climbing and he sees a face at the top of the ladder. And he sees a face and he's a face he's never seen before. And the face is telling him, stay strong. You know what I mean? Don't fall, hold on to yourself. Hold on to yourself, but don't fall. Um, then he wakes up. Something of the sort. And after he wakes up, he doesn't know who the person is. And life goes on. A year, about a year later, they, he hears about a tzaddik named Rabbi Nachman coming to town. And he decides to go pay him a visit. The second he sees Rabbi he realizes who is that. It's the guy from the dream. The guy from the dream. That's on the ladder. It's his entire Torah. His entire because his entire life feels like he's falling. He's not getting the tzaddik he wants. He's not getting close to Hashem according to the way he wants. He's crying, reading TV. He has to go buy bagels. See what I'm saying? That's a fall for Rabbi Nathan. But he gets to the place where Rabbi Nathan is telling him, hold on to yourself. Because the entire point is not whether you fall a thousand times. But even after every fall, you're coming higher and higher on the ladder. But once you hold on to yourself, I think he even fell at the end of the dream. He falls and he wakes up. Which comes to show you that Rabbi Nathan wasn't saying he said, keep climbing, but hold on tight. I think that was the phrase. Not this idea of don't fall, because you're going to fall, but hold on tight, because even when you fall, I, won't, I still need you to keep climbing. Keep climbing the rungs of the ladder, even after you fall. Because you're going to reach the top, it's just a matter of keep wanting it. Well, I bet it was the same thing to Abinata. No matter what it falls, the person goes through, because even time, sometimes so person... So even if you, sorry for cutting you off, so even if you fall, um, and so you're going up the ladder, but you're saying that even when you fall, the falling, or so to speak, in this example, the feeling rejected and far from Hashem is actually getting closer. So if you take that, maybe it's if you were to fall off a ladder, you would go down. So maybe it's not a fall, maybe it's just a slip because. In the dream, Rabbi Nachman was telling him, just hold on. So maybe he's on the ladder and holding on and slipping, but he's not falling because if he would have fell, he would have went down. Since he's going up, or since he's repairing what there is at that state, maybe instead of a fall, I like to say, I would like to think, slip instead of fall. It's, I know it's, it's sm- not considered I know a, a small I know. thing. What I, it's not considered a fall. Meaning, according to the... we always say fall, fall, fall. It's actually so negative. We're always saying we're you're falling. Right. We're not falling. We're just slipping. Well, maybe we didn't fall. It's not a step at all. In fact, it's actually all getting close. Which means maybe it's not even a slip. Let's, let's retranslate this inner meaning of fall as... Yeah, it makes right, it a fall thing, because it's not right in the method of Torah. Meaning like, Hashem doesn't want us to break Shabbat Chaz Shalom, right? Sometimes a person just starting to keep Shabbat, it, it happens that he falls, right? It's tough. Yeah. For him, what he's going through right now is because he has a desire to keep Shabbat, he has to go through this place where it's difficult. You know what I mean? Sometimes he didn't eventually he didn't keep it, but eventually he will. It's all to the journey to get to you to get to that place where you're doing it. This is it. It's just holding on because yeah, they're considered falls until you understand. And you believe that they're not a fall. Meaning they're falls unless you understand that that you're not falling, you're just getting closer. So uh, um, and this is what the uh, Rabbi is, is teaching us in this lesson. So I think it's a it is the one of the foundations of Rabbi Torah. You could go over this lesson every day for 120 years, essentially. <laughs> That's the <laughs> issue. Yeah. Because this happens to a person every single moment, you know what I mean? All the time. Uh, days, weeks, years of his life, you know? Months, whatever it is. A person's going through this. So it's, uh, it's definitely a Torah. Oh, okay, sure. It's honestly an insane lesson. It's huge. It's huge. It's everything. It's, um, 
it's um, it's something to put a lot of thought into for sure. Mm -hmm.